Welcome to the Rick Fuller Podcast, presented by Rick Fuller, the team leader of the Rick Fuller team, which serves the San Francisco Bay Area and Sacramento County. Rick and his team have 1,000 five-star online reviews and have been honored as a distinguished small business by the California State Senate and Assembly. Rick is a community leader, national real estate coach, and a real estate investing expert. I'm Christina Morales, a writer and marketing specialist, and today we're going to talk about something that everybody is asking you, Rick, and all of our team members. What will the real estate market look like in 2021? So many people were celebrating the end of 2020, and as they should, but let's face it, we're going to live with the aftermath of this unique year for a long time. And just because a new year begins, it doesn't mean that all of our baggage is left behind. So there's a few topics I would love to get your input on um, concerning the real estate market. We've talked about low inventory, low interest rates, the economy, and there's a lot of other factors that are influencing the market. So I'd like to break it down topic by topic, if that's okay with you. You bet. So what's inventory going to look like in 2021? Well, Christina, this is our first podcast of the year. Yeah, uh, we did so many of them last year. It was awesome. Right. And uh, all of those are on our podcast. And uh, I have not received any more questions than Rick. Tell me about the market. Hmm. How is the market doing? And the, and the reason why they're asking is they're seeing other markets and other industries um, that are struggling and through 2020. And the truth is, in comparison to, say, the travel industry, do you remember, Christina, when you'd get on a plane and you'd travel or you'd go on a cruise or, you know, we have family and friends that, like, that stuff's not happening anymore. No. People right. aren't traveling. Hotels have significant restrictions. Uh, we don't travel on planes. We don't travel on a cruise ship. We don't do these things anymore. Think about the entertainment industry. You know, we're in the state of California. I know we have people that watch this from all over the country. We're in the state of California. What do you think of when you think of Southern California? Disneyland, right? <laughs> you think of Disneyland, the happiest place on earth. Uh, not very happy right now. It's no. been closed for months. Months Disneyland is closed, including today at the time of this recording. Uh, we think about restaurants and the impact restaurants have had in 2020. Uh, very nice restaurants have now had to convert to do takeout or delivery. They can't even do outdoor or indoor dining. Um, and so how did the real estate market fare? Well, the amazing thing, Christina, um, even though those industries were in turmoil, real estate became a beacon of hope in 2020. It was a beacon of hope. It was, um, in some sense, there was hope with the real estate market. And if you own a home and you are a homeowner, today your home is worth more than last year at this time. Like your home has appreciated, your home has gone up in value. Not only that is your interest rate is lower today. So if you needed to refinance and you wanted to take more of your monthly payment and drive to the principal balance, today real estate has become a beacon of hope for people because you're able to refinance at a lower interest rate than you could in 2019 and even early 2020. It's at the lowest levels right now for interest rates. Um, more sales are occurring. So if you're in the business, you're a lender or a real estate professional or one of our team members that are watching, this is a great time. People are moving and transitioning and it's in a great time not to sell real estate. It's a great time to serve people. Hmm. People are moving all over the country. We'll talk about that later when they're moving all over Northern California. There is a great migration that's occurring and it's a great time to serve them and help them reconnect and relocate into another community. But all of these things um, really pair in comparison to what I think is the greatest part of real estate in 2020. And that's the value of our homes. Christina, you and I right now, we are in our homes. Mm -hmm. The value of your home is greater. Now, I'm not talking about the economic value. Yes, we've already covered that. I'm not talking about the ability to finance it. We already covered that. I'm talking about when we went to shelter in place, where do you shelter, Christina? In my in home. Our homes. <laughs> right. 
you know, when, when we met with our family and had tough conversations around a kitchen table, where did that occur? It occurred in our homes. Uh, when, we, when we celebrated Christmas, even though it was limited, we, where do we celebrate? We celebrated in our homes, New Year's in our homes, even though there's less people, but we celebrated these things and the value of, of real estate, the, the intrinsic value of home ownership increased. Mm -hmm. And now people are working from home. They're schooling from home. Um, everything about our life is occurring around our house. And as as the COVID um, fluctuates and, you know, the implications of COVID, people go back to their home. They shelter in their homes. And so real estate, Christina, from that perspective, um, the value of our homes in our life is greater today than it was even last year. We took advantage of our home. We didn't think about it. You know, we a lot of people in the Bay Area, they get up early in the morning, they're on the BART train, they travel to the city, San Francisco, they're traveling to Sacramento, Emeryville, Oakland, Richmond. But today, they spend a lot more of their time in their home. Uh, their gym is closed, so they've converted a bedroom to a workout center, right? Um, their offices, they're, they're, if they're in office, in the office business, they don't exist, so they've got another bedroom that they've converted to an office. And so I think one of the things about real estate in 2020 that became the beacon is the value, the intrinsic value of real estate is greater today than it has ever been because of the value of home. Mm -hmm. It's just funny because I'm just nodding and smiling. I have my uh, treadmill in my garage. <laughs> I have my living room is my office and I love my home, but it's, somehow it's shrinking. Well, you know, you yeah. have girls, you have kids, it shrinks. And so, yeah, I love my home, but boy, do I need a new one. And so it's funny in the beginning of 2020, we were shocked. We had this conversation about interest rates and they were hovering around what 3.8. And we we're like, that is great. I mean, that is super low compared to like when our parents bought their homes. And now we've been seeing it go down, down, down. And it's just been kind of living at 3%. So do you think we can expect interest rates to hover around 3% in 2021? Christina, how many times have you heard on the radio? Now, not just in 2020, not in 2019, not in 2018, going all the way back to 2017, even 2016. How many times have you and I heard low interest rates, right. historically low interest rates, never again, hurry while supplies last, right? Low interest rates. And here we are in 2021. And I will tell you at the end of this year, interest rates will be lower really? than what they are even now. Is that not unbelievable? I was on the phone with somebody else and they said, Rick, do you realize that the interest rate, the mortgage interest rate is getting to a point where it's lower than the cost of inflation? Like that's how low it is. You're, you're, the, the gallon of milk, the gas at your local gas station is caught, the inflation of those products are higher than what your mortgage rate is. And what I love about low interest rates, a lot of people say, well, low interest rates, you know, what's that? We've been hearing about that for the last five years. But let me tell you what it really does in the life of, you know, Bay Area residents, what it does in the life of our Sacramento uh, clients. What it does is it allows them to be able to afford a home by having a smaller payment. I love that. Their house payment is lower because they have lower interest rates. The second thing I love about lower interest rates, and you know, because we've done podcasts on this topic, every month they pay their mortgage, they drive more money to their principal balance. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden they turn around after a year and they've They've dropped their principal balance by tens of thousands of dollars. That doesn't happen with high interest rates. It doesn't happen because the money went to interest rather than the principal balance. And the third thing I love about it is it enabled people to do a 15-year mortgage. And I always ask them, Christine, I say, I'm curious, what would it be like, just dream with me for a minute, if in 15 years you didn't have a mortgage? What, what, would that, what would that look like if, and let's say you live in the home and you didn't have a mortgage and they said, Rick, that's my biggest expense. I said, what would that be like? 
well, I guess we could travel more. I guess maybe I wouldn't need to work as much. I get, well, that's what it, low interest rates give them the ability to move from a 30 year fixed rate mortgage to a 15 year fixed rate mortgage. And when you look, and we've done these podcasts, and you look at how fast that reduces their principal balance when they're on a 15 year, year and compared to a 30 year mortgage, mm -hmm. most people save hundred over a hundred thousand. And in many cases, depending on your home value, and, and mortgage uh, principal balance, several hundred thousand dollars in interest, all because of these low interest rates. And here's the most amazing thing. Jerome Powell is our Fed chairman. And he, um, him and the committee set the Fed rate. And, you know, and every, every month and every quarter and every year, people wait, uh, they hold, your, hold their breath to hear what the Fed chairman is gonna do. It could be Bernanke, it could be Greenspan, it's now Powell. Mm -hmm. He came out the other day and said, interest rates will remain low, the Fed rate, till 2022. Wow. Like there is no more holding your breath. There is no more waiting for anticipation whether the Fed's going to raise the interest rate. He's come out and say the, the Fed rate, which indirects your mortgage rate, indirectly impacts your mortgage rate, will stay low till 2022. And to me, this adds additional value to real estate because it enables first time home buyers to buy a home. It enables those that are working to pay off their home and own it free and clear, which we believe in. We believe that 100% of the foreclosures occur with a mortgage, like get it paid off, you know, own it free and clear. What would it look like to have a home and not have a mortgage payment in 15 years? It's a game changer. How can you redirect that to your retirement or your kid's college mm -hmm. education or traveling or whatever it is that you want to do in 15 years when you don't have a mortgage payment? And he's come out and said, you're not going to see interest rates increase till 2022. Um, to me, that continues to add value to, to home ownership and the value of being a homeowner. Is that part of the reason why you think the market is so hot right now is the low interest rate? Well, the interest rate, Christina, in my mind, it's like the gasoline on this fire. And okay. so the, the fire is burning for one simple economic principle, supply and demand. We do not have enough homes for sale. That's the reason. And demand continues to increase for real estate. You, those two economic principles, supply and demand, are not in balance. There's not enough homes to meet the demand. That's where the fire is from. The interest rates like coming up and pouring gasoline on it. It's like, okay, now not only do we not have enough homes, but we're gonna make home ownership more affordable. Now you multiply that, Christina, with saying how, showing how fast rents have rise, right? Mm -hmm. Rents have exploded over the last 10 years. Sure. Many people who are watching this or listening to this would say that their rent has gone up um, astronomically over the course of the last 10 years. They, like, they remember a day they were paying 1,500 and now they're 2,500. They remember a day they were paying 1,800 and it's now it's now three thousand, thirty-five hundred, or four thousand dollars. Wow! Um, and you take those, and those those are stimulants to the market. It stimulated the market, and it's adding fuel. And the interest rate is one of those factors. It's not what's causing the market; it's what is really causing the market to explode. Mm -hmm. And. We've all watched the news, COVID-19, um, and how it's impacted small businesses. And what's shocking is you sent me an article, and they cited the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which shared that since we're all sheltering in place, Americans saved money in record numbers. Uh, not me. I obviously bought all this stuff for my home office. <laughs> and the gym's not work there, so about the treadmill. But not only that, the average income has increased. And you've said before, the economy and the real estate market aren't totally dependent on each other because like you said, supply and demand. But how has people spending time at home, their income going up, how has that influenced how people are buying homes and the demand in down payments? Yeah, and Christina, you're absolutely right. Well, think about it. People are saving more money. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's difficult for us to go out to dinner with our spouses today, <laughs> isn't it, right? So. Yeah. 
on date night, it becomes let's order pizza. Uh, how about Chinese food tonight? Uh, you know, it's takeout or delivery. We're no longer going out to a restaurant. We're no longer going out uh, to a movie theater. And so people are saving more money. Mm -hmm. uh, that is great for Americans because Americans have not saved enough money. Right. Uh, many times, one, most Americans are one catastrophe away from going broke, going in bankrupt. Mm -hmm. um, and so to me, what this does is this allows us to do two things. One is it let, lets us buy in a community that's better. Mm -hmm. And number two, it allows us to better the way we buy a home. Let me start with the first one. So it allows us to be able to buy in a community that's better. We are seeing a massive exodus uh, out of the Bay Area. That's just the fact. And lots of news organizations have reported on that. And you and I have talked about this time and time again. In the 1800s, there was the gold rush and the great migration to the state of California, specifically to San Francisco, that then permeated and filled the San Francisco Bay Area, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a migration west, the great migration. That's what you taught when you taught your history class. That's what we learned in school. <laughs> Today, the migration has reversed, and it is the great migration east. And the first stop they make, Christina, is the greater Sacramento region. That's why we started putting offices there. People always ask me, why did you go and put offices in Sacramento? Why don't you move into, you know, Danville? Or why don't you go into Walnut Creek? Or why don't you go put offices there? Because that's where our clients are moving. Our clients are moving from the Bay Area to the Sacramento greater reason, region. We all know people that move to Folsom and Roseville and El Dorado Hills and Rockland and Elk Grove and on and on and on. We all know people. Like I, I, you and I've been in rooms together where I say, raise your hand, pre-COVID. Raise your <laughs> hand and tell me how many people. And everybody in the room raises their hand and they know people that have moved uh, to the greater Sacramento region. And so... To me, it enables when people save more money, they can buy in better communities for them. And they can make that transition and they can buy in, in the greater Sacramento region. And many people are moved even further east than that because we're seeing a lot of people move to Idaho. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many of uh, our past clients, our clients are Texans now, or they live in Tennessee. Yeah. Uh, huge. Arizona, Oregon, Washington, uh, even Nevada. And they're moving for lots of different reasons. And we actually created a, a directory, Christina, you are a big part of that, to help our clients transition from one home, one community to the next. They don't know anybody in Nashville, Tennessee, or Boise, Idaho, or San Antonio, Texas. And so we created a directory, uh, we call it Rick's Pros, of people that I've worked with for linear, literally for the last 10 years that we can connect them with that do business the way we do business. And um, so we're seeing that great migration uh, occur. And so people are able with this additional savings to buy in a better community for them. Mm -hmm. But then we see they're also able to buy it better. With a bigger down payment, the home doesn't become the American nightmare, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but home ownership becomes the American dream. Um, and when you have a bigger down payment, you have bigger reserves, uh, you're able to get a better interest rate, you're able to drop these crazy things like PMI and mortgage insurance and all the stuff that comes with low down payments. Uh, all of that has benefited. And at some point, Christina, we just talked about interest rates, but at some point, interest rates are going to rise. And if you get a great loan the first time, maybe you never refinance again. And if you never refinance again, don't you want the rock bottom low interest rates and having a better, bigger down payment helps you buy in a better community for you, but also helps you buy it better. And both are important. Mm -hmm. And one thing I've noticed a lot or anybody who's been looking at the market, I have the Redfin app on my, on my phone. There are crazy bidding wars and offers are getting accepted that are thousands, tens of thousands over. I mean, on my phone, it's constantly beeping like 25 notifications that the houses have been sold. They've been on the market, what, less than 10 days. So will this continue? And is this going to cause a housing bubble back in 2008 like that? A lot of people are concerned. Can you share some insight on these things? Yeah. So Christina, this is another very common question I have. Are we, are we headed for a real estate bubble? And people see on the, uh, on the outside 
they think that a lot of these things that they're seeing represent that that occurred in 2006, 2007, even 2008, and they get concerned. Um, I would tell you there are some big differences between now and 2008. Uh, one of the huge differences um, is that real estate specifically uh, doesn't have ownership, real estate ownership doesn't have a good alternative today. Uh, if you're not owning, what are you doing? You're renting, right? Those are general. I mean, I guess you could live with mom and dad. I guess you can go into the no. basement. <laughs> uh, be careful because I think one of your mom or your dad is watching this because I just saw him <laughs> chime in. So be careful what you say. <laughs> but I guess you could do that. But most people think I'm going to rent or I'm going to buy. Uh, that's your two choices. Well, rents have climbed so much. Now, in 2008, that was not the, that was not the scenario. The scenario in 2008 and 2009 and even into 2010 was if I didn't own this house that I'm paying thousands and thousands of dollars a month in mortgage, you know, my mortgage payment, I could rent the exact same home in the exact same community right down the street for half the amount. That doesn't exist today. Rent and real estate home ownership are very much equivalent. Every community is a little bit different and there is a difference between owning and renting and but it's nowhere near has the disparity or the difference that it did back in 2008. Now think about real estate. I told you that in my mind, the simple economic principle of supply and demand is what's affecting home values. Mm -hmm. And the interest rates are what's adding fuel to that fire. Now, if you think about it, um, government can, make, can print more currency. Government can print more cash and boy, they're good at it. <laughs> they are experts at printing more money. Oil can drill more and impact the market, right? They can drill more and have more barrels of oil. Christina, how do we get more real estate? You, you can't. <laughs> real estate, land mm -hmm. is limited. There's only so much of it. Uh, ask a San Francisco resident because for decades, every lot in San Francisco is built. Yeah. There is no buildable lot. Uh, and if they're buildable, it's because you got to tear something down to rebuild. There's no available land. Now, when you look at the economic principle of supply, there's inventory. You can print more cash. You can drill for more barrels of oil, but you can't make more land. And it's the land that's valuable on real estate. It's not the house. You know, you and I referenced that we both have kids. You know, we both have girls. There's dings and dents on the wall. There's toothpaste that's, you know, embedded into my sink. Like that doesn't go up in value. You know, you do you think that, that my house itself is actually improving over time and that's why it's going up. No, it's the land. Mm -hmm. The land is what's causing the values to rise because there's a limited amount of land and you can't print more land and you can't drill for more land. We only got so much land on planet earth and until Elon Musk plants his uh, community on Mars, this is where we're at. And you're going to see not enough inventory, not enough supply, for the demand that exists. And that occurs all across North America, into Canada, uh, all across most of our states are experiencing similar uh, demand for real estate and not enough supply. And a big part of why there's not enough supply in addition to you can't make more land, a big part of it is we didn't build. As, a, as an industry, real estate builders did not build nearly at the rate that they should have. We needed more building, not today. Today there's sky, there's cranes all over our, our landscape, right? Mm -hmm. But you go back five years ago, seven years ago, you go back to 2009, there wasn't a builder in sight. There was no dirt being turned for residential real estate. Well, that created a vacancy, it created a void. And that void is what's causing, there's just not enough homes to fill the demand for people that wanna buy houses. And what's interesting, Christina, and I know we got to wrap it up, and, but you know, you think about it, um, what's interesting is 34 years ago, 34 years ago today, um, there was a boom in babies. There were more babies born 34 years ago 
um, than, than, in, than many other times in history. There was a boom and it lasted for about three years. And that boom of population that occurred about 34 years ago um, is uh, a big part of what's happening. And how do I know that? Because the average home buyer is 34 years old. And 34 years ago, we had a boom of uh, babies, and now we're seeing them buy real estate. They're the average age of a first-time home buyer, which is the largest segment of the market. No other segment is as big as the first-time home buyer. And now we're seeing a massive number of people. We're going to see that for the next couple of years because that boom in population, that baby boom that occurred 34 years ago, uh, lasted for about three years, and we're seeing more and more baby boomers enter into baby boomers from those years, not baby boomers from the, you know, societal millennial. But ba that baby boom of 34 years ago, they're now ready to buy a house, and so we see more of them, and we don't have the inventory to support it. I blame the 80s and the John Hughes movies. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's hard to blame a John Hughes. Movie. I mean, come on, those are the best. Where are the John? You know, I you know I tell the kids all the time. Where are the John Hughes movies of the day? They don't exist. I know. They, we just watched a marathon yesterday. So sorry. Oh, you did. Yeah, Was yeah. John Candy in any of them? Huh? No, those are the ones with Molly Ringwald. Oh, you're going yeah. back even further. <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, that's all the time we have for today. <laughs> so obviously we've only touched the service, surface. There's so much that we can talk about with the real estate market in 2021. And so many people do need to move because of home offices, not enough space. And like you said, wanting to move um, from the suburbs into um, more areas that are not so COVID-19 uh, impacted. So we have an exciting event coming up. And so if you're thinking of buying or selling this year, or you just want to pulse on the real estate market, we encourage you to come. Rick, can you share a little bit about the event? When is it? Yeah. And what are you going to talk about? Yeah, Christina, it's super exciting. I mean, if you like some of the things I saw, I said today, or you were intrigued about the great migration or people moving from urban to suburban, or people moving east and how that's playing out, uh, I'm going to do a deep dive in that. And I'm going to show you specifically where people are moving. I'm going to forecast what's going to happen at the real with the real estate market with your if you own a home with your home value. If you don't own a home, I'll be going deeper into interest rates and where they're going. Uh, today was just really the overview. We're going to go deep on that. We've got some great slides from the California Association of Realtors to kind of back up what we're sharing. Uh, and we're going to do that on January 20th. And it's the state of the market. I do this every year. We actually have a website, Christina, that you know we put together to keep both the real estate agent and our family and friends informed of what's happened to the market called ricksmarketupdate.com. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can check that out there. But join us January 20th and learn what's happening in the market, probably about 45 minutes, and I'll take a deeper dive and you'll leave with where your home value will be at the end of the year, where interest rates will be, uh, where people are moving, where are the, where are the opportunities uh, throughout the United States. Um, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll dive deep into it. So I uh, look forward to having you there. I love that because you always have so many great facts and great facts that you have backed up with all the stats that you research. So I love that. Thank you so much. And that sounds incredible. I will be there. <laughs> so put that on your calendar. It's January 20th at 7. And we'll have it on Facebook Live. Thank you everyone for spending part of your day with us. Be sure to put a great review in our podcast from whichever platform you're listening from and have a great day. Stay safe. Thanks, Rick. Take care.